I want to talk about how to calculate and program a reverse diet. Now, there's a few different populations of people who a reverse diet can be helpful for. The first one is for people who have achieved a really, really lean physique. They're happy with their physique, but they're not happy with their current calories that they need to maintain that physique. The second population is um, they have not quite gotten to their goal uh, in terms of leanness but their calories are kind of unsustainably low and they want to bring them back up without gaining excessive body fat. And then the final group would be people who just want to increase their energy expenditure through dietary means without gaining excessive body fat. Okay, notice the common thread. Try to increase calories without gaining excessive body fat. Now, people ask me, where should I start my reverse diet? Like how many calories? Well, it's going to be individually dependent because it depends on what you maintain your body weight on in terms of your maintenance calories. So that gets to be a little bit tricky because remember at the end of a long diet, your maintenance calories are a different number than what they are at the beginning of a diet, right? So my maintenance calories in my off season got up to almost 38, 3,900 calories. Uh, and now that I've been dieting down, they're probably closer to 33 or 3,400 at the same level of activity that if I'm talking about my maintenance, I have to decide which maintenance am I talking about, my off-season pre-diet maintenance or am I talking about my post-diet current maintenance. What I recommend for people as a blanket recommendation is when you start a reverse diet, you should start at least at your current maintenance, at your post-diet maintenance. So what your maintenance actually is. And this is why we have our app Carbon Diet Coach track your maintenance calories because it'll allow you to have a really good idea of where to start. Should you start there or should you increase a little bit from there? Because you can do, you know, more than that. Well, it just depends. For people who have done like a bodybuilding contest prep or people who are at very low body fat, who feel really bad, have low libido, low energy, brain fog, that sort of thing, I recommend adding at least 10% to your post-diet maintenance. Okay, so for example, right now, um, if I was to do that, my diet, my maintenance currently is about 3,300 calories, maybe 3,400 calories. So I'd add an extra 300 calories on top of that, a little bit more than 300 calories, to get that extra 10%, okay? Now that is to get you out of that deficit so that you can feel better faster. If the priority is recovering from the diet and feeling better faster, then you'll wanna take a calorie boost of probably 10 or 20% above your post-diet maintenance. However, if the priority is absolutely minimizing fat gain at all costs, I would start at your post-diet maintenance calories and then increase from there. Now people ask, what do I do with my protein, carbs, and fats? Protein can decrease slightly as you move from diet into reverse because calories, carbohydrates specifically, are very protein sparing. Therefore, you don't need as much protein in your reverse diet. So what I usually do is I recommend decreasing your protein intake by five to 10% um, at, after you move into a reverse diet because you just don't need as much. Now, if you like protein, you just love protein, you don't want to reduce it, you don't have to. But I'm just saying you don't need as much to build muscle. As far as your calories from carbohydrates and fats go, um, you can really distribute those however you like. There's no real research showing that your ratio of carbohydrate to fat makes a difference. This was shown in a meta-analysis by Kevin Hall back in 2017 where they compared uh, 30 different studies where food was provided to the participants, protein and calories were controlled, and the levels of carbohydrate and fat were varied. And basically the summation of the research data is there's really no real difference in fat loss or energy expenditure between um, any of those diets. So that says, Great, you can do whatever you want with carbs and fats. After I subtract my protein out, which is usually around 225 to 250 grams of protein per day, that's 900 to 1,000 calories. My remaining calories, so for example, if I had 3,600 calorie budget and I took 1,000 out for protein, I have 2,600 left. I'll usually go about 60% from carbohydrate and about 40% from fat. And that usually gets me to a really nice balance that is sustainable for me. If you want more fat, fine. You can go a little bit more heavy towards the fat side. You want more carb, you can go a little more heavy towards the carb side. I just wouldn't get too extreme on either end because it just becomes harder to hit and harder to sustain. And I would avoid 
getting into a very low carb reverse. And here's why. There is one study on the ketogenic diet uh, in resistance trained people looking at lean body mass accrual. And they showed that even with protein and calories equated, people in the ketogenic diet group did not gain as much lean body mass as people who were eating more carbohydrates. So that's one thing. And also in some of Kevin Hall's studies, his metabolic uh, ward studies where everything is completely controlled, um, they see increased nitrogen excretion on ketogenic diets uh, compared to non-ketogenic diets, which uh, nitrogen balance is basically how you build muscle. It's more complicated than that, but if you want to build muscle, you need to be in a positive nitrogen balance. And they see in the ketogenic diet setting, there's a loss of water and nitrogen. So maybe fine for fat loss, but definitely not optimal for building muscle. Hope this video has been helpful for you guys. I have a ton of other videos on reverse dieting you can check out. And of course my courses, uh, Training the Physique Athlete and the Science of Nutrition can help you out big time when trying to figure out how to set this up for yourself or your clients.